Hi, this is Tom and welcome back to Life 4.0 and our fourth video in our series on installing solar. As a reminder to our regular subscribers, we are taking a break from our normal sailing and travel videos to publish this series on our recent ground-mounted solar panel system. At this point, we are done thinking and planning for the project. It's now time to start breaking ground and building. In this video, I will walk you through step-by-step -step on how to dig the holes for the concrete piers, making sure they are in the exact position for your structure, and how to complete the trenching for the electrical conduit. So, let's dive in. All right, All right. we got our uh, excavator loader. Looked a lot bigger in the pictures, looks like a little little mini guy here, but actually if it digs holes deep enough for us, we need to go down four feet. Uh, it'll work out as uh, the perfect tool and then the loader part uh, we'll use to shove the dirt back, fill the dirt back in the holes and back in the trench after I'm done putting the conduit in. So today's mission is to dig uh, 10 holes that are four feet deep uh, and then also uh, dig the trench that's going to go from our house over here in this corner and run along. This rock pile is gonna have to move out of the way, um, but run along over to kind of the middle of the array. And then um, I've got these sauna tubes. So this is a uh, 12 inch diameter sauna tube that was required as part of the design. And uh, I could buy them in 12 foot lengths. They're actually a lot better quality than uh, where I got this one at than at Lowe's or Home Depot. Those were kind of all sort of uh, used up leftover stuff from projects over the summer probably and uh, this I got at a place called HD Supply uh, they have a lot of um, stuff like this so and it's a lot better quality so I'm gonna end up cutting this into three pieces of four feet and then I've got two more of these uh, sauna tubes they kind of look like missile launchers and uh, but hopefully they'll do the job so that's the mission for today ten holes in a trench hopefully I'll be able to do that all and 24 hour rental time, otherwise I'm in for two days of rental of the tractor. I had never excavated holes with a tractor before, so if you are hesitant about running one, don't worry. I found the controls became intuitive after a little practice, and eventually it gets to be kind of fun. Our design for the piers changed several times with an initial spec from Iron Ridge requiring a 24 inch wide pier to a depth of six and a half feet. Thankfully, the town inspector agreed to a much more reasonable 12 inch width and just four foot depth, just below the frost line here in New England. I removed the pavers that had previously marked each pier location and painted a large X on the ground with white paint, which helped us stay centered over each hole once digging started. All right, day two of excavating the holes for <laughs> The uh, sauna tubes, first day went okay, but slow. Um, just we ran into a lot of rocks and a lot of tree roots and stumps and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm down for two day rental for the excavator. Hopefully today we'll finish. Uh, I, got, I got two more here to do um, to start. The other ones have been started. This last one, um, I had a huge rock, two huge rocks down in there. Because of that, taking those big rocks out, the holes end up being pretty big. So um, this is an example of one we did yesterday. Um, sauna tube, four foot sauna tube has to be all the way down at grade level. So I'm um, gonna have to pull that sauna tube back out and this one as well and um, dig the holes deeper, but we're just kind of getting a reference point. Um, so you end up hacking up your yard a lot when you do this, but that's the way it goes. And uh, we're gonna see if we can make good progress. I think the best one I did was down here in the corner that one's pretty much ready to go. Um, sauna tube has to be lined up. And then once we get the right depth, we'll be taking this extra fill and backfilling the hole so that the uh, sauna tube is stable in there and tamping down the dirt around it. Uh, today's weather forecast is an oh so promising 31 degrees of rain and snow. So I'm up here in my foul weather gear and we'll see how this goes. All right, holes are all dug, and we got the right depth um, for the sauna tubes. 
Now what I'm doing is starting to lay out a grid of a uh, masonry line, uh, basic string, and uh, to get a precise location for each one of the sonotubes before we um, start to backfill around them. So I'm gonna build a grid. I've got these um, three quarter inch electrical conduit, um, 10 foot pieces of those cut in half and I pounded those in. And I used a level to make sure they're pretty, pretty up and down. Um, and I'm gonna run string, two strings along here and then put a, like a little orange tape on the string right where the um, center point is supposed to be for the sonotube. These sonotubes are supposed to be 10 feet and three inches apart. So I'll put little flags on those and that'll give us a good sense of where we need to locate them. So um, digging went pretty well. Um, where was it, this one or, or this one over here, we had a tree stump down in there that I ended up having to get a chainsaw and cut off one of the roots off of the tree stump. But that's all behind me. We're all ready to move forward and get the sonotubes in position and start to backfill so we can get ready for our pre-pour inspection from the town. They require um, an inspection, probably mostly having to do with the uh, height or the depth of the sonotubes. I'm also gonna measure up from the ground level up uh, probably three feet high on the conduit so I have a consistent height of the string all the way across. And that way I can measure down from the string and make sure the sonotube is at the right level. Um, I can always trim a little bit off of the posts that I'm making if they're a little bit uneven, but I want to get them as close as possible, um, the sonotube height, because the concrete's going to come right to the top of the sonotube. going to mark uh, a little bit of the orange tape uh, right on the masonry line where I want the sonotube and then I'm going to space those 10 feet 3 inches according to the spec for our array. And I pulled these masonry lines really really tight. Um, that's another reason why it's helpful to have the conduit because it's strong. Um, you don't want any sag in the masonry line otherwise you're going to get a bad height reference in the middle here. And I'll try a little masking tape too, that might hold on better. Okay, now I have my starting point. I'm going to go down the line 10 foot 3 inches. So definitely the long um, reel, measuring tape on a reel is helpful for that, for going that whole distance. And uh, it's not precise. But we'll have a little bit of room and we put the J-bolt down on the concrete. We can we don't have to put it right in the center of the sonotube. We'll pu I'll put it more precisely where it needs to be in case the sonotube's a little bit off of position. And I've also got these uh, little levels that hang from a string. It's called a line level uh, and uh, they came in a two set, this particular one. But you, uh, it, when you string the masonry line, you can use this um, to see if the masonry line is level. I'm just curious as to whether the slope that I have set up here is level or not. Um, it's personal preference whether you level out your array to the ground or whether you level it um, uh, to, you know, making it level. <laughs> um, I don't really care. Um, actually, I think it might be better for the array to be at the same angle as the ground, which the ground's probably pretty level too, but this is just more of a curiosity thing. So when they're both, um, they both show a little bit of a slope up uh, to the street here, and uh, more importantly, both masonry lines were about the same angle on the level. So that lets me know that I did get a good height, 32 inches from the grade um, on the conduit. So I know that these are pretty similar. The thing I'm going to try using, I saw this at the store, is a, it's a laser level, but it's a corner level, so it shoots two beams at a right angle and um, I'm going to use this to get uh, as true of a right angle here so that I go over from this one marker for this sonotube and go over and mark the location on the masonry string for the other one. That'll, that way I know that the array is, uh, is true, it's not skew. Um, so without Karen here at the moment, this may be a little bit of a challenge to mark on the masonry line. But this will at least get me started on the right side for the other masonry line. And then I'll 
start marking down 10 feet, three inches on the other. This is kind of the tedious part of the whole process, but it, it makes sense to kind of slow down and be patient with it because a slight um, mismeasurement or going too fast and putting the sauna tube in the wrong spot will screw up all the, the um, trueness and the squareness of the whole array. I'm going to go down the other end and use this corner laser to check to see if where I end up with the last mark on this right hand string is a 90 degree angle from the end last mark on the other side just to make sure that I didn't uh, do addition problem or a mistake on measurement. Okay, so those are all um, pretty well square. and. Um, the next challenge is to try to get the sauna tubes um, at roughly the same height, uh, a distance down from the masonry line. And um, that's going to be kind of tricky because we've got uneven soil where I dig down and excavated the holes. Um, and we've got a little bit of a sag on the masonry line, especially as it rains here. Um, but we'll do, do the best we can and get the, as close to the same consistent height. So it's pretty close. Um, it's, it's pretty hard to do, to, given that there's a variability in the sag and the masonry line. When we cut these, they were 12 foot tubes cut into four foot lengths. We didn't get the 48 inches right on on each one of them. So some of the tubes are longer, some of the tubes are shorter than 48. So we're just going to go with what we got on this one. <laughs> so I'm going to start to do a little bit of hand shoveling, filling in, and getting the tube sort of stable uh, and upright and obviously in the right position over the yellow markers and then um, once I'm happy with that then we can backfill more um, and get them in the right spot. And while I'm doing this I'm just checking to make sure that the sauna tube hasn't moved a whole lot. It's going to move around a little bit but I want it to kind of roughly be right above the middle of that yellow tape. So we got the sauna tubes in position and backfilled part way up so that they didn't move a lot. And now we're doing more filling. And I'm taking a 4x4, four four, um, 8 foot long 4x4 four four, and pounding down the dirt to compact it around the sauna tube because otherwise it's going to settle down later and you're going to have a divot and it may not support the footing as well. Pounding there, I'll do some filling here. All right, day three of our excavation work. <laughs> the project that I thought was only gonna take a day. Uh, I just called Home Depot and extended our rental of the uh, uh, tractor for the weekly raid instead of the two day raid. Um, so it's going pretty well. We finished up yesterday with um, backfilling most of the post holes. Um, we've got a little bit more backfilling to do and um, tamping them down with this tamper or with uh, the four by four. Um, I started using the um, tractor to push some of the dirt in. The challenge is you don't want it, obviously dirt to get down inside the tube, and so I was using this old oil drain pan uh, to cover up the hole. So we've got some more filling in to do. I've got a friend coming over this morning to help with some of this, and uh, and then I got to move the excess dirt out of the way because we're gonna want to have a nice uh, level even place to work with when we're pouring the concrete and rolling the uh, concrete barrel mixer around and pouring the tube. So um, we're going to be backfilling this morning and then I've got the inspector from the town coming to give our uh, pre-pour inspection and sign off on that and once we get that then we'll be ready to mix the concrete and start pouring. Um, I've got a delivery coming in from Lowe's of 60 bags of 80 pound concrete. Uh, I looked at having a ready mix concrete truck come and under a different version of this project when I had much bigger sauna tubes uh, it made sense to do that but I was we we're way below their minimum their minimum is like four cubic yards and I'm supposed to need just over one cubic yard of uh, concrete for this so uh, the good and the bad of that um, it's a lot less expensive <laughs> um, to do a smaller concrete project in terms of the cost 
uh, but it's going to take me a lot more time to mix the concrete in the barrel and then physically walk it over or wheelbarrow it over and uh, pour it in. With the ready mix, they come over and they have that chute that comes out and they have a 30 minute wait time, otherwise they charge you more, but um, in that 30 minutes I think you can pretty quickly pour all the concrete in the tubes and be done. But that's the way it goes. It was going to be about a thousand bucks for me to do the uh, poured concrete before and now mixing it um, and having it delivered from Lowe's is going to be like uh, 200 bucks. Alright, next up we're going to be digging the trench for the electrical. It's going to come right to the corner of the house here and I painted a white line down over to the center of the array over here. Okay, it's morning after a long day of uh, concrete work. We've got all 10 piers in, uh, poured, mixed the concrete, poured it down in, put the J bolts down in the precise spot where we had marked with the masonry line, so that's all set. Um, it was got kind of cold overnight, uh, close to freezing, a little under freezing, and uh, so I put those little styrofoam pieces over top um, to keep the concrete from freezing. In reality, um, even though the ground was around freezing, the concrete, I measured it with a thermometer, was um, about 40 degrees, and so it generates its own heat as it's curing. Uh, that's what the, uh, one of the concrete people told me as well. So um, we have a little bit of tolerance there, even though the temperature may be down again overnight, freezing over the next couple days. It's a lot of work to do the concrete. I won't uh, beat around the bush on that. So we have, again, uh, four feet deep, one foot wide sauna tubes. And for 10 of these piers, I went through 52 bags of 80 pound um, quick set concrete. Um, and that's a little over 4,000 pounds of weight that we were moving around. Um, we were so busy yesterday, we didn't have time to do a lot of recording. Uh, we were under the gun to get it done before nightfall. And because of that, um, I'll have to kind of explain how it went without all the equipment here. We had a uh, large concrete mixer that I'd rented from Home Depot. Um, I got the 10 cubic foot size. They had three different sizes. That was the largest one. It supposedly takes five 80 pound bags. We uh, did it in ratios of batches of four bags. Um, even though the sauna tubes probably took a total of about five bags worth of concrete. Um, but it was just easier to handle. The thing is really heavy. Uh, four bags is, you know, what over 300 pounds, so trying to maneuver, the, it's on a dolly and trying to maneuver it around the soil that's been disturbed and, and the wheels settle down in and can't move, uh, we didn't go any bigger than that. But it was nice to have the big mixer just in case. And um, we used a upside down big foot uh, concrete footer thing as a funnel, which worked really, really well. So we would set that down in, um, in the sauna tube here and over top and that gave it's it's pretty wide it's about a two foot diameter and that gave enough sort of leeway when you're trying to maneuver this mixer and tilting it up to pour it in uh, enough leeway to get it down in the hole it definitely was a two-person job uh, my wife and i did it together and she was mostly holding the funnel and directing me in terms of how much to tilt because you can't see how much you're pouring in and whether you're in the right spot so that was really helpful. You want to um, get kind of in a rhythm of doing this in terms of how much to mix and have the water ready to go and pre-measured in a bucket. Uh, the way we did it is we um, took half the quantity of water required and that, uh, that was uh, I guess six quarts of water. Each bag takes three quarts and we're doing a four bag batch so we did six quarts is half the water. We threw that in the cement mixer first and so then we added three bags of concrete and the second batch of water. So all the water was in there, but minus one bag of concrete. We got that mix for a while, um, maybe a minute or two more, and then I added the fourth bag. The reason we did that is found, we found that we put all four bags in and then added the second batch of water that uh, 
there was stuff that got stuck in the bottom of the barrel and I had to dig it out with the shovel to kind of free it up, dried concrete mix. Um, so doing the three bags and letting it mix in with all the water and then adding the fourth seemed to get a good mix. And then you have to let it mix for a while. And uh, we let the mixer run for about five, um, six minutes, something like that, um, while we're getting the next batch of four bags uh, queued up and ready to go. And um, you'll notice that it, it you can kind of see it blending in after a couple minutes. And uh, you don't want to kind of rush that part. You want to make sure it's blended in. <clears throat> um, the other thing that we found really, really helpful, um, I ended up renting this loader backhoe combination for a week and it really helped yesterday with the concrete. We had a pallet uh, right here and we had another pallet positioned over here from the delivery from Lowe's and we had them get them as close as possible yet having maneuverability with the tractor around them. Um, and I would, I would load four bags into the loader, into the bucket here and, um, and then bring the tractor around to wherever uh, pier we were doing with the mixer located right there. Um, you don't want the mixer far away because the thing is, like I said, it's hard to roll around unless you got two people and you got a lot of strength there. So I position the mixer right close to the, the pier where we're going to pour. And so we would pour in and, um, you know, get it up to the top. Um, and then there's these J bolts that we've got down in. And I've got no more than an inch sticking up. Right around an inch is what I was shooting for. That's the depth that's needed for the bracket. Um, the bracket has a cover over top that the post sits on top of, so I can have a really tall um, portion of the rod sticking up. Um, I measured it and it's just about an inch. You, you don't want it too short than that, then you don't have a chance to put the washer and the nut on there. Um, and then too long and it's going to stick up in, the, in the, the metal cover that goes over that that the post sits on top of uh, won't fit. So that's right at about an inch. And we taped the ends, the, the threads, so that the uh, concrete wouldn't get into the threads there as we're pouring. And we'll just pull that tape off once we're ready to put the, uh, the post base bracket on. Um, so what else? The, the um, you know, positioning again of the, the piers and making sure that the J bolts are exactly spaced according to your design was also um, a little involved because you have to take the masonry line off and uh, to pour or move it a little over to the side and so you kind of can mess up some of your dimensions so as we did a corner like we started this first corner here then i knew that i could start to measure in our case 10 feet three inches to the next j bolt so i knew i knew that the sauna tubes were roughly in position but you can see this j bolt is a little bit off this side a little bit um, and so we were measuring this each time with a tape measure before I put it in the bolt in. And then likewise, we come down to each of the additional ones. And at the very end, once we're done with the whole row, I took our long um, tape measure on a reel and um, double checked the distances all the way across, um, adding 10 feet, three inches to each of the previous measurements to make sure that the whole thing uh, was um, accurately measured out. If you're just measuring each interval, you can get off by you know a little bit, and by the end you might be off by a couple inches. But you want to make sure you have um, uh, coveralls on, almost like as if you're painting, but um, but heavier duty than that, because uh, concrete's going to go everywhere, and particularly around your face and your eyes and your mouth. Um, Karen got a little splash of concrete when she was washing out the barrel in time and it stung her a lot and you want to have goggles on to keep the concrete from getting your eyes and especially a mask at least those white fabric uh or sort of white dust masks but even better would be a, um, a full respirator because when you pour those bags when you get those bags going into the mixer uh, at the very end you get a lot of dust coming out of the bag and it's just all over and it got in it made it difficult for me to breathe part way through even though i had a a white mask on so um, and we had um, heavy-duty gloves on as well you don't want to get any concrete on you because it reacts with water um, and it can burn you so a couple safety tips there for you okay my last uh, little extracurricular task for today um, is putting this grounding rod into the soil uh, to provide a ground for the array um, I'm not 100% sure 
sure that everybody does this or if it's required, um, but that's what it seems like from the reading that I can do. And, um, you know, I guess it really can't hurt. It costs like 12 bucks for the, the rod. So um, it's a gigantic thing. It's eight foot long. They make them in copper and they make them in galvanized. And actually I think, yeah, I think the galvanized is just a coating on the outside. It's still copper in the core. So I'm gonna pound this thing in. I'm, I'm trying to do it now before it gets colder. It's supposed to turn colder tomorrow and then kind of be cold for the week. So um, see if I can get it down on the ground. I'm gonna go pound as far as I can go. I don't know if I'm gonna hit hard soil, rock, roots or whatever. And I'm just gonna stop there and I'll plan on cutting it off um, to the height that I need. And then what happens is there's these little lugs you can get. I got this at, um, at Lowe's, but these little lugs that um, screw on or clamps really is what they are. They they clamp on to the to the rod and they provide a little channel or space for the uh, grounding wire. So I got bare copper wire, eight gauge wire, uh, 225 foot length. So I'm gonna put this right in the middle of the array. Our array is a little bit less than 50 feet long. And um, so that should give me enough wire to go each direction, uh, 25 feet or so, and then come back to this grounding rod. If you have a all metal mounting, then you can only you only need to really provide one grounding lug on one rail. Theoretically, all of the panels and all the rails are all connected together if you've got that um, galvanized pipe going on. Um, I've got timber frame with uh, aluminum rails, so each pair of rails that connects um, four panels is you know, they're all electrically connected, but they're isolated from the other adjacent columns of panels. So I'm gonna have to get lugs, grounding lugs for each one of those, and then run wire across and then down to this grounding rod. And there we go. You can see the trench in here that we started a couple days ago um, from the end of the house where uh, the electrical is going to go in the house over to our electrical panel. And um, I'm going down about uh, 18 inches, so 18 or more inches. I'm also going to take a chance to bury some more conduit. Conduit's really cheap. I've got um, this uh, two inch electrical conduit over here. <clears throat> and I bought twice as much as I needed because I want to run two lines. Uh, my electrician said that to go with this, this is probably going to be overkill in terms of size, but you know, again, it's really cheap. And then I got some just basic white uh, Schedule 40 um, kind of irrigation PVC pipe that I'm going to put in there as well, just in case I ever do. Um, I might do a, a connection to irrigation um, around the side of the yard. So that's the plan. A little bit of trenching today. A helpful thing to check the depth and make sure you got a good. good Fitting everything, seeing how it's all going to lay out. I'm going to put two two runs of um, regular Schedule 40 PVC in there as well. Here we're going to have an external disconnect, manual disconnect switch on the house here, and then it's going to go back down and run out to our electrical panel. So I'm going to make those um, positionings now, and then start PVC and the other additional lengths together. Okay, for cementing the conduit, just gonna get a little bit of dirt off the uh, contact points. And I'm gonna put this cement on the inside here and on the outside to about the depth of this connection. And then you squeeze them together and rotate them a quarter turn to get it coated. Quarter turn, and I'm done with that one. 
With the elbows in place, adding a little dirt on top keeps the conduit from moving around. And then it's a matter of working your way down the trench, cementing each joint together, packing more dirt on top, and finishing up with elbows on the other end to bring the conduit back to the surface. I've got you know all the conduit in and I backfilled just to above the conduit and I packed dirt around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a caution tape down on top of the dirt and then fill over on that. That wraps up this edition of our series on installing solar. Join us next time as we build upwards, putting the structure in place on top of our hard-earned work of setting those concrete piers. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider giving us a like, as it really helps others find this kind of content. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to be notified of our upcoming releases.